Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father God, we come before your holy presence. Giving you all the glory and honor, God. We thank you on today. We thank you, Father God, for all that you are and you continue to be in our lives. We thank you, Lord. If I can't say nothing, I will say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help me, help me, people. Thank you, Lord. Let's bring it down to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the I'm not going to lose here. My soul cries out to you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. God, we thank you, Father God. We come before your presence. Give you all the glory and honor that you rightfully deserve. Father God, I want to ask you, Father God, as a humble servant, Father God, to watch over those that are here. Those that are challenging on the dangerous eyes of the Bible, Father God. Keep them, Father God. Keep them, God, until they get to the coming to give you the worship, to give you the glory that you deserve, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father God. Thank you for those that are here. As they grow, we thank you, we thank you for our hallelujah. Oh, Father God, I ask that you watch over the apostles. Strengthen the Father God's hands in the office. They will give Father God strength to touch his body, God. Touch his body, God. Touch his mind. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Let's praise his name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, you are worthy, hallelujah. Oh, praise him, praise him. Glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, God, I ask you to watch for those that are suffering, those that are afflicted, Father God, keep them, Father God. And as they turn to you, Father God, speak to them, Father God. Speak to them, Father God.
But every last one of us in here need to be feeding one another. If you feed me what I need, not necessarily what I want, it removes a whole lot of the garbage and junk that creates the division going on. I know I'm going to give you help. See, that's why I told y'all earlier, pray for pastor. It'll get rid of a lot of the garbage in your mind that sits and festers and makes you wonder who's on the side and who's against. If you feed them that are in your house with what they tell you thought I was just going to stay with church. Feed them in your house. And if you feed me, that means you're taking time to cook in your mind what you're going to give me, which means you ain't got time for a lot of the garbage and junk that will separate us from one another. Your mess ain't a, ain't, ain't a silence, so that means I ought to hear you talking. Of God which is among you. You in the midst of them. Why are you only feeding certain people? I said every Sunday I'm coming. Don't like me, Jenna. Thank you so much for smiling at me. I appreciate it. I can tell you smiling just by how your mask moves. Why are you only feeding certain people? Come on with your partial self. Feed the flock, not just who you want to feed. Feed the flock, not just who's on your side. Feed the flock, not just who you feel comfortable with. Feed the flock, not just who's in your favorite flock. Aggravate somebody and tell them, feed me, feed me, feed me. See how they talking? See how they talking? I'm scared of y'all today. I'm coming from a good deep. I said, tell somebody, feed me. Talk to somebody that ain't been feeding you and you ain't been feeding them. Tell them, feed me. God, give me a word. God, anoint me. God, use me. But I can't trust you with what I'm giving you because you only want to give it to me. Agreeing with and getting along with. I knew it'd get tired, but I came to work today. Feed the flock which is among you. Then he gets specific, taking the oversight. That's talking to those of you who are supposed to be supporting pastors. Come on, let's talk. Guess this may be another Sunday we can't post. I, I don't care. Come on. Come on. Come on. Talk to the preachers. Yes. Come on. Come on. Talk to them with titles. Yes. Yes. Taking the oversight. Come on. You know what, Sister Ring? We'll dance in a few minutes, and maybe a little more than a few minutes, but I'm coming. You know what? When you really want to know where you fit in in church, wow. Wow. Right. Come on. Mother Wally. What it simply means is where I see the need in my spirit to take care of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where, where do I work? What do I need to do? It looks like everybody already got something. I don't fit in. Well, where do you feel a need in your spirit if you listen to your spirit and stop listening to your mind? I'm sorry, company. I know y'all didn't come for all this today. I promise I'm coming for you. I got some good work for you. Let me get through working, uh, cleaning the floor and mopping and spraying down the walls and everything, sanitizing. Stop listening to your mind that makes you feel like folk are against you. Yeah, your body don't lie. I can't trust what your face say because I can't see it. Don't let your mind feed you something out of your flesh because you're going through changes because it'll mess up your oversight. Now nobody can trust you because everything you do is based off of how you feel and not off of the Spirit of God that gives the oversight. You won't be instant in season and out of season when you work your flesh, but you'll be instant in season and out of season if you are 
heart and the spirit. I, I can trust you to come to me. I can trust you to talk to me. I can trust what you dream. I can trust what you prophesy. I can trust what God shows you. I can trust what you pick up while you're on your knees in intercession and in prayer because you are walking in the spirit. Nobody, nobody's saying you ain't got no gift. I'm just saying your gift ain't enough. You got to have some spirit. Got to have some spirit. Happy belated birthday. It's got to have some spirit in it. Can't play the music. Can't open up service. Can't read a scripture. Can't lead a Bible study unless you are in the spirit. Let me tell you what's been on my mind. Let me tell you what I've been saying. See, you already in the wrong spirit. I've been talking to my preacher simply. Tell her, ah, back up off of that. I see you looking at me. Took it out, took it out, took it out, took it out. Ah, back up off of that. You're coming out of the wrong spirit. And you're not going to be able to help nobody when you need help yourself. How can I heal you when I need healing? How can I deliver you when I need delivered? Oh, it's tight in here. I ain't even, this is just the first and second verse. We got to get the verse number 11. How can I do it? I have to, he, 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 didn't, he, he didn't say, oh, I, I, I'm going to give it to you. He said, you got to take it. Because my Bible may read different from your Bible. Take in the oversight. Why can't I find real people to tell the truth in here? You want to take over and make things right, but it's in your flesh. I don't want a part of your mind, a piece of your mind. I don't want your feelings and emotions. Tell me what the Bible says about what I'm doing wrong. Let me get you told. No, 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 no. Wrong spirit. I ain't got nobody talking to me. Wrong spirit. They that walk in, in the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that walk in the spirit are the sons of God. Don't turn around and become a bastard because you mad, because you angry, because you hurt, because you ain't delivered, because you need to get on the altar and get it right. Wait till you get it right, then come and talk to me. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, Lord. Listen, not by constraint, which means constraint means you got limitation. Come on, come on. You got both. I won't turn talk to you. Come on. Taking the oversight, not by force. Come on, Jesus. Jesus. I can't make you do right. When I'm making you angry. Come on. Listen. Uh, <laughs> my father might see this later on, but I'm grown now. He might say something to me differently. But in the Bible, my father used to always get on me. You gotta obey your parents, you gotta obey your parents, you're already gonna obey your parents. Okay. What is that? When I found that scripture. What is that? What is that? Talk to all y'all lovingly, lovingly loving parents. When I found that scripture, you used to wake me up early, five, six o'clock in the morning on Sunday after working really hard for the weekend, whatever we had to do. Wake me up early, be down there while he's studying uh, a Sunday school because he was a Sunday school teacher. I found that scripture. I was already up before he called me. He woke me up. I was already up. Already had my pajamas ready, put my teeth. I was down there in that living room, dining room table, sitting there. What? Come on. Jesus. Um, what is that, son? Daddy, you know how you was always telling me the Bible says. Come on. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. But you ought to obey your parents. Uh -huh. Anybody been around my father? 
Mm -hmm. They don't really get no answer. I said, but in that same. Scripture. It says parents. You should not provoke your children. I, I know I, I'm a parent. I'm a parent. I'm a parent. So, so, so I'm in there with you. I'm a parent. You are not provoke your children to wrath. I love my father. I, I love my father. You know what he did? He completely ignored me. <laughs> completely ignored me. He said, but what is the other person? I ain't got nobody to talk to. What is the other person? But that, and I know what that verse said. I started with that. But what does it say? Children obey your parents. But sir, I want to talk about now what the other verse says. So, you know, being a child, I couldn't say much. <laughs> now I don't put a red child stand on a grown man. I understand what he was saying. You work on you. Uh -huh. Obey oh, and I work on me. Uh -huh. Not provoking. Why won't church talk to you? Uh -huh. We both got something to work on. You work on your words, I work on my hurt. I'm going to assume that's what he meant. However, when we get talking about constraints, you don't have a pastor who works by fear. Come on, I've been in ministry where everything was based upon of fear. You don't hear me, this is not working. You don't hear me, gonna lose this. You don't hear me this is gonna break down for you. And then you don't hear me. I mean just just a whole bunch of cursings. Yeah. This is a whole bunch of cursings and cursing does not mean profanity. Those are two different things. When I curse something that means its ability to perform is now canceled out. So you know most people say I'm cussing you out. Uh -huh. Come on. Just laugh at them. Because they don't know what they're talking about. Amen. Profanity is where you use all the other wonderful things that you can only say with the wonderful words. But when, when you are cursing, that means I don't want things to operate according to how they should with you being who you are. So now I'm troubled because if you are supposed to be my leader, you should want things to work because if things do not work, then I am not able to operate like I should operate as who I am in the church and in the kingdom based upon you cursing. What should be working? I ain't got a church to help me. Everybody has run into somebody who often tries to make you recognize that things are not going to operate like they should based upon the fact that you have now messed with them who I guess is a special person in the kingdom. So I'm going to show you how special I am by canceling out how good things are as they are in your life. <laughs> and when you get to dealing with people like that, you've got to be very careful to stay away from them because they operate under the mindset that if I'm not happy, you ain't going to be happy. I'm going to preach it because I feel it in my spirit. If you're, if you're making me mad, then can't nothing operate. Can't nothing work right because you have not made me happy. And if I'm not happy, God is not happy. I don't serve a God that blesses me based off of somebody operating out of their flesh that wants to scare me into doing what you want and not what God wants. Come on, push. I want to do it God's way or no way at all. And if you're not happy, maybe you need to talk to God just like I need to talk to God. Why are you cussing me? You better be careful you don't curse yourself because the Bible told me who God blesses can't no man curse. And if God curse you, can't no man bless you. And he said, I'm going to bless you. And any man that 
blesses you, I'm going to bless thee. Uh, and any man curses you, I'm going to curse thee. Uh, so we need to reevaluate. Uh, uh, that mask ain't stopping you from talking. Uh, we need to reevaluate uh, how we operate off of a fear factor. Uh, I'm scared they're going to talk against me and things ain't going to work. No, no. Uh, uh, you didn't bless me, baby, because you didn't save me. Uh, you didn't die for me. I got to find me a church. Uh, and if you didn't die for me and save me, then you can't curse me. Uh, but if there's any other power greater than God, I ain't never found out about it. I ain't got a trust to talk to me. And if it ain't greater than God, then it ain't greater than the blessing from God. And if it ain't greater than the blessing of God, it ain't greater than the hand of God. Look at somebody and tell them, I ain't going to touch you yet. Oh, but you better know God is blessing me. It may not. I said, tell them God is blessing me. Stop crying over what they lost because some better 
lucre and not by constraints. But I want you to do it willingly. And I want you to do it with a ready mind. Which means now I know everything is not going to work perfectly while I'm trying to accomplish this purpose that God has in my spirit. I know it's going to be some obstacles. I know it's going to be some bumps in the road. I know it's going to be some pitfalls here and there. Oh, but my mind is already made up. That no matter what happens and no matter what goes, I'm going to do the will of God. If it was easy, anybody could do what I'm doing. Anybody could love what I love. Anybody could work with what I'm working. Oh, but he chose me to do the job that I'm doing. Everybody can't do what I'm doing. Everybody can't take the hurt that I feel. Everybody can't take the talk that I'm taking. Everybody can't take the pain that I'm feeling. Something that you ain't got to worry about. 
on that thing. Oh, she's cut on moving, and my wife and I would laugh. She would say she called me Daddy Dearest. I don't want Daddy Dearest always coming up here. So I would call some of the brothers, or I would call Bishop Antigua, and we'd run on up there and pack everything. I had Exodus at the time, which was like a full big truck. We pack our two trucks, didn't need a U-Haul. Move around. And finally, I said, okay, you got one more move. somebody to talk to you. Look at somebody and tell them you got one more move. One more, one more, one more. Some of y'all talking like you ain't ready to say, tell them you got one more move. Now I didn't know when I was encouraging her about one more move that it was prophetic. I got to find me a church I can talk to. Is there anybody ready for one more? You got to talk to me. I said, are you ready? Ago, she said, uh, she said, this is my last year in Rhode Island. Uh, I said, hop, 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 wait a minute. Uh, we ain't got no room for you. We got room, but we ain't got no room for you. Uh, we started laughing. She said, no, nope, my time is up. Uh, she said, now nah, I'm getting ready to move back.
Lord and come down to the Lord. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto them that know what they're talking about. Tell somebody, I done been through a few things. Oh God, there you go, talking more again. I'm going to build me a church where folks scared to come and they ain't going to talk. You talk with it, you know church, you're hollering when you're watching a movie, when you're walking, when you're walking, and when you're walking in your kitchen, why are you won't talk in the church? Tell somebody, I've been through a few things, hear me, hear me, hear me. I'm not a fly by night, I'm not a novice, I done been through some stuff. When I dance, I'm dancing cause I'm mad. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. I'm almost there, I promise. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. And be clothed with humility. Same thing he said last Sunday. That you can't help me if you ain't never been hurt. You can't help me if you ain't never been broke. You can't help me if you ain't never been wounded. You can't help me if you have never had to live for five years, six months without a heart, without happiness, without joy in your house, in your home. I want to talk to somebody who encourages me. Nothing. 
time you get ready to see me live the rest of this year not worried about nothing I'm casting it all on God if I don't make it God didn't want me to make it if I don't live God didn't want me to live if I don't get healed God didn't want me to get Give it to God. 
God. And let God deal with it because he cares. You be sober and vigilant. Because God doesn't want you missing an opportunity. You said you were ready to pick me up in 10 minutes. You said you were ready for one more move. But if your mind is drunk, you hear clearly. But your actions say, I got something in my system that won't let me activate and operate what I heard. That's why I can come to church and I can hear what God says. But I can't live it like I heard it. But if you be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, we almost to verse number nine. Uh -huh. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. In other words, I'm just waiting on somebody who said they're ready for one more move. To get drunk on society. Get drunk on your problems. Get drunk on your mind. Get drunk on your lack of resources. And then you won't pay attention to be creeping upon you. Well, because a lion doesn't just snap out. He creeps up through camouflage. He creeps up through camouflage. He gets in the environment and mixes in so you can't see what's coming. Lord, I got to find me a church that'll talk to me. Look at somebody and tell them the devil's trying to creep up on you. Ah, stop being drunk. Pay attention to your surroundings. He's just waiting for an opportunity. Lord, I got to go. I have to be so many vigilance because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking, Lord, I got to go, whom he may devour, whom resist, steadfast in the faith. Tell somebody the last thing I can afford to do. Some of y'all ain't talking. Find you somebody to talk to so you can proclaim and declare out of your mouth with your spirit. The last thing I can afford to do is my faith in God. Lord, I got to go. I can lose a lot of things, but my faith in God is the last thing I can afford to do. Later, knowing the same afflictions are accomplished in your world that are in the world because you ain't the only one the devil is after. Look at somebody and tell them the devil's after all of God's people. If you really want to know if you belong to God, all you got to do is look at the attacks going on and in your life. If you really want to know if you got a purpose and a destiny with God, just look at the attacks going on. He says now, but the God, I got the God of all grace, here we are, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After ye have suffered a while, yes, sir, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen, settle you. Ah, that was four things. To be glory in dominion forever and ever. Amen. I got to go. How would you look at somebody and tell them today's subject? I, I, I want a church that know how to talk. Talk to the girl. Tell them today's subject is rebirth through adversity. Let's go to work. The definition of adversity means a state or 
instance or moment of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune. And the definition of rebirth means either a new or second birth. But it also means spiritual regeneration. I ain't got a lot of time to play with all of you. You can catch this later. Understanding that life and the life of a believer is filled with seemingly unfortunate events. We must know that these things that we are dealing with are simply the wrappings of a rebirth. Nudge a neighbor and say, neighbor, I need you to understand something. Whatever's trying to break you, whatever's trying to take you out, whatever's trying to attack your health, whatever's trying to attack your mind, whatever's trying to attack your spirit, whatever's trying to attack your destiny, whatever's trying to snatch your pride, is nothing but a shift yourself. Let's go. 
go back to my mama's womb. And he wasn't just saying at the age that he is at. He said, I've got to go back to where I started. I'm going to find me a church somewhere to be. I've got to go back to when I was a baby. And then back to being just a goat in my mama's belly. Stop. 
genius is seen and heard during times of great defeats of ideas. In times of great need and lack of resources. Like Solomon. Heroes are birthed in times of great suppression and depression. Like Gideon. Prophets are birthed in times of worship adversity. Like Samuel whose mother laid on the altar crying like she was a drunk woman. I know some of y'all don't know what an altar is or crying to you drunk. But tell somebody I know what it is. To go before God. And I don't leave until I look like another person. Oh, I'm going to find me a church that'll talk to you. Some of y'all will sit there like you hard of hearing, but you better learn how to speak out, sir, or you'll never get the next move that God. until Eli. The prophet didn't understand her pain of wanting a child Lord, I got to go that would bring the salvation of Israel. She stayed on the altar because her womb was closed and it was considered a curse from God for a woman not married not to have a baby. She stayed on the altar of God that had closed her womb and stayed there until he reversed the curse. I won't find me a church. Not the neighbor say neighbor. You ain't got to understand why I worship like I worship. Why I go to God like I go to God. Why I go crazy in the because you ain't never wanted something so bad that you look like another person in church. I thought they were sick. I thought they were sick. They're all up in church, tearing the church apart. Because what I need from God is greater than the sickness inside of me. I thought they were depressed. They ain't talked all week. Because what I need from God is greater than what's trying to depress me. And suppose y'all gonna find me in a minute. Since you're now God says, stop trying to avoid what's going on and immerse yourself in it. So you can be with birth through the adversity. I declare, I declare, I declare, Lord, I got to go. I promise I'm here, son. I promise I'm coming out the door. I declare things don't look promising. Somebody, it don't look like it's gonna work. Uh, talk to them convincingly. You can talk about this one because you know how you feel. Well, tell somebody, it don't look like it's gonna work. It don't look like I'm gonna make it out all right. It don't look like I'm gonna be happy again. It don't look like the smile I'm giving folk is ever gonna be real. Don't look like God knows what he's doing. I'm out of here now. I got 10 minutes to close. Tell somebody it looks like to the natural eye. Things can only get worse. Lord. I said it looked like I can only go. I feel like sometimes I ought to just die where I am. I feel like sometimes I ought to just stay in my bed. Pull the blanket back over my head. Cause it don't look like it's gonna be a sunshiny day for me. 
wish I had a church to push me. Because I'm glad that God doesn't change the word just because it looks like everything ain't working out for my good. things are working for me, but I know that God has a plan, y'all just won't push me, so I gotta carry y'all on my back, I said tell my neighbor, God has a plan, I said God has a plan, I heard him declare the gym, I got to go Said I know the plans that I have for you. Look at somebody point at them and tell them God got a plan for you.
this amount of membership. And we've been able to buy all of this property. We've been able to help all of these kind of people. They said we're working as old classmates. I got to get out of here. Tell somebody from talking about you. Because they're from your past. And they can't believe that you made it this far.